dear colleagues, I'm Christoph Diener from the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Duisburg, Essen in Germany. And I would like to propose for reading for you five studies in urology, which were published in June 2024. Let me start with the secondary stroke prevention. We all know that the most important causes of a secondary stroke are changes in the thrombotic system, but also inflammatory processes play an important role in recurrent stroke. Colchicine has shown anti-inflammatory properties and efficacy in secondary prevention of coronary heart disease, and therefore the CONVINCE trial published in Lancet investigated whether this drug could be effective in secondary stroke prevention. The study compared in an open-label trial 0.5 mg colchicine per day plus usual care with usual care alone. The primary endpoint was fatal and non-fatal recurrent ischemic stroke, myocardial infarction, cardiac arrest or hospitalization for unstable angina. The study included 3,154 patients with minor stroke or high-risk TIA. The primary endpoint was shown in 9.8% in the colchicine group and 117 in the usual care group, and this difference was not significant. This was also true for recurrent ischemic strokes where there was no difference. Two problems with the study. Number one, there was no placebo. And the other problem was that the study had to be interrupted in between due to COVID-19 and did not achieve the planned number of endpoints. The second study deals with a new uh, substance group of dual GIP and GLP-1 receptor agonists. Tiazetapide is one of them. This drug is approved for the treatment of type 2 diabetes and ob obesity. Now, we all know that obstructive sleep apnea is associated with obesity. And therefore, there were two double-blind randomized phase 3 studies performed in patients with moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea syndrome and obesity published in the New England Journal of Medicine. The first study only included people without PPAP therapy. The second study included only patients with PPAP therapy. The dose of uh, tirzepatide was 10 or 50 milligrams once a week subcutaneously or placebo for one year. The primary endpoint was the so-called apnea index, which measures the number of apnea phases during one hour at sleep. At baseline, this was on average 50 apnea phases per hour, and the BMI in both studies was around 38. Now, during treatment, there were 20 events per hour less in study 1 and 24 events less for study 2 for tirzepatide compared with placebo. And there were also significant differences in all secondary endpoints, such as reduction in body weight, improvement in sleep disturbances, systolic blood pressure, and CRP. And most probably, this drug will get also an indication to treat uh, sleep apnea syndrome in people with obesity. My third study is very interesting because it discusses the possible mechanism of GLP-1 receptor agonists for the treatment of obesity and uh, diabetes, uh, published in JAMA. And there might be effects beyond simply the uh, metabolic effects via the dopaminergic reward system. So perhaps this could be a drug that could be used to treat dependency. For example, smoking cessation without consecutive weight gain or alcohol and cocaine independence. And there are a number of ongoing studies. Other indications for GLP-1 receptor agonists are Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. And we have already some promising results for Parkinson's disease. So it will be very interesting to look at the results of the ongoing studies. My next studies comes from the United Kingdom. This is a population-based cohort study investigating the use of antipsychotic substances in patients with dementia. And this study went for 20 years and they investigated 174,000 patients with dementia. And of those, 35,000 received a new treatment with an antipsychotic drug. They performed propensity matching analysis and found an increased risk of pneumonia, acute renal failure, venous thromboembolism, stroke, fractures, myocardial infarction, and heart failure. 
and there was a control disease which was not increased. This was uh, appendicitis and cholecystitis. Now, this showed, study shows a high risk of adverse events with antipsychotic drugs in patients with dementia in the first 90 days. The problem is then the therapeutic dilemma that we need this drug very frequently in patients with dementia, and I don't think we have a good alternative. My last study deals with the treatment of functional motor disorders. And there are two different uh, therapeutic approaches. One is psychotherapy, and the other one is specialized physiotherapy. And this is a study performed in the United Kingdom, a pragmatic randomized study published in Lancet Neurology. And they randomized 355 participants with functional motor disorders to special physiotherapy or standard physiotherapy. There was a positive trend in favor of special physiotherapy, but this was statistically not significant. Regardless, probably this is a way to treat these patients in addition with psychotherapy. Dear colleagues, I'm Christoph Diener from the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Duisburg-Essen in Germany, and these were five studies published in June 2024 in neurology. Thank you very much for listening and watching.